Welcome to Tech Notice. This is Box Tech episode three. We've got some teleprompters here, USB-C hubs, two PCs, and we've got some in-ear monitors, camera monitor, a USB stick. Let's have a look. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. This is a Momon MT12 teleprompter. Okay, so this is like a little uh, foot pedal where you can uh, start and stop, I guess. You know, have it underneath the camera there. The only thing is, that's too loud. That's definitely going to be on the camera. I'm not sure about that now. A great idea, but like, listen to this. That's too loud. I can't use that. Let's have a look at the rest of it. Okay, so here's the actual teleprompter. You put your camera behind there. My face, like that. But then you can see something underneath there, as you can see. You've got two uh, phone screen holders. They feel very, very cheap. Like the cheapest plastic you can get. Nothing special, but I guess it works. Here's a magic arm, but it's plastic. So I don't have a lot of confidence in this. It feels very fiddly as well. Game and key. Um, you can see that on the side here, in the front, there is tablet holder, a kind of shroud here. So you can have quite a big kind of tablet in there if you want to. You can have it slightly bigger, but you have to make sure that it actually does support like the uh, actual screen width, because if it goes above, it can't actually reflect it back to you. Goes onto this angle and then you project it underneath onto there. So now, as you can see, Someone can look through here through the camera. I'll open the hole now, then you can see what comes through here. So these adjustments on the side here, you can actually move it forwards left and right, which can adjust the angle of the teleprompter. So basically you're gonna have your camera, if you already have a tripod, you put your camera on top here and then you slide the camera inside here and this will, you know, in essence, become your tripod. Underneath there, can you see these two knobs there? These will tighten the actual, you can open it that way. And now you can slide the smartphone holder out from this side, as you can see. And then we can tighten it again from here. So the idea here is that this whole thing will mount onto your tripod through these poles on the bottom. On Android, if you want to download the app, you have to download it through the Momon website. So it's not on Google Play Store, which makes me just raise some questions. Like this product doesn't necessarily make me feel like this is a really good quality product. I think if you want to spend lots of time making it work and um, you know, it can work, but it doesn't feel like you're gonna get like, you know, like amazing teleprompter for this. How much does this cost? So it looks like it costs $150 for the set here. I don't know, what do you think? Is it is it good price? Is it not good price? Let's move on. I wanna see this PC. This is the B-Link, uh, sir. That's with AMD uh, Ryzen 5 5560U processor. 16 gigs of RAM, 500 gigabyte SSD, Wi-Fi 6E, which is good. One gigabit LAN, and what do we have about 60 watt power adapter? Let's see what's inside. User manual. <laughs> this is smaller than I thought. Look at that. This looks uh, quite, quite mean. Okay, so from the front, we have two type A ports, USB, then one type C headphone, probably mic headphone combo jack. There's a clear seamless little button there, which is interesting. I haven't seen that on any of the mini PCs or not as, as visible, maybe somewhere inside, but this is just a little, you know, paper clip and you can do that. Quick setting button description, press delete to enter BIOS, press F7 to enter boot options menu. In the back, we have a DC port in, two HDMI, two USB, and then a LAN port. One side, we have the grill, the other side grill. It's a six core, 12 thread processor, 15 watt TDP, but it's AMD configured, configurable up to 25. And here as the accessories, this is the SATA data cable. 
uh, which we're gonna have to use inside there if you want to install like a hard drive 2.5 inch hard drive or SSD there this is mount in the back there if you want to mount it to your monitor or something like that you can do that like that we've got a HDMI cable power brake and a shorter HDMI cable oh that's nice and then some screws for your you know motherboards and other things inside that's nice because if you mount it in the back of the monitor you can actually use the shorter cable to you know get it working so while this pc is turning on and doing some of the updates i want to move on to the next one so this is a basin uh, professional in-ear monitor headphones b master second here the interesting thing here is it's got one dynamic driver okay one double layer 10 millimeter driver and then three balanced armature drivers per ear so you've got four drivers per ear altogether eight drivers which is uh, quite amazing here uh, there's a few different colors available i went with these ones they look like the most decent ones i wish these were black like on this i wish there was like actual black versions available as well because i'm not like dead keen on uh, silver shiny things silver carrying case like that so you can put your in-ears in there i like that well, we have two types of cable that come with it actually one is like braided this one is with a microphone so you can actually use it like as a headset or something like that so you can use it with your phone which usually you'd have to purchase separately but they've actually given you this a cable inside the case which is interesting as you can see you've got three kind of lines in here whereas this is just stereo so don't use the three line one when you're using them for in-ears let's say you know you've got a wireless in-ear pack from your stage manager or something like that don't use this cable this is only for like phones and if you want to listen to it or you know learn or something like that because there's a microphone in there okay it says that one is left and one is right but i've got blue and red in here and there's no indication which one is which so once you've got them in uh, putting them in is slightly different than than usual headphones because they go in like in an angle like that so if you've got the left ear it goes in like that then around your ear and then you can bend it down the uh, the ends of the headphone are actually there's like a little uh, wire inside so you can mold it let's say your uh, in-ear pack is actually in the back there and if someone pulls on the wire it actually pulls it further into your ear rather than pulls it out of your ear cables long but not long enough to be annoying you get lots of different ear tips here as well you've got some of the foam ones like a um, memory foam ones to completely mold the headphones in your ears then you've got this kind of cone ones and then just normal rubbery rubbery tips that you usually see you've got the cleaner here to clean the headphones 3.5 millimeter to 6.3 millimeter jack adapter here as well so let's plug them in and i'm using apple music here to test them so let's let's see what they sound like so um i've listened to these here now these in-ears and generally they're they're quite okay actually I think for the price point you're paying for them, I'm not exactly sure how much they cost, but they don't feel quite like high end and I don't have some professional equipment to test it. I'm just testing what I'm used to listening, what I've listened. I've uh, listened to the KZ ones, KB ears, and then I know how certain songs need to sound like, so I know what to listen out for. But these ones here kind of, they have a very, it doesn't feel like it's a flat EQ. The bass is Honestly, I like the bass, how the bass is. There's quite a lot of bass there. It feels bunchy. If you play in a band, you can easily separate the bass guitarist, for example, and hearing them play, they're very nice to nice to hear that. It doesn't muddle in. Then I do feel like there's a little bit of a gap in the middle there, and then quite a lot of highs have been boosted. So the very, very highs, they like clear, almost like annoyingly clear a little bit. So when, when you're listening to them, it feels like, oh yeah, nice clarity, but actually, it's almost almost too much like some of the very highs need to be like cut or like kind of put down a little bit so that's kind of like my opinion i'd love to know if any of you have tried these before the bazin b master second generation but other than that i'd give it like um you know seven out of ten i'm quite impressed how much you get with like all the stuff like the cables and things plus they don't look that bad they look very professional you know so if you want to rock up into your you know concert or whatever you want to impress someone wear these they're like quite nice uh, you can actually change them as well when the cable breaks that's nice the only annoying thing is like actually putting the cable in is slightly hard but 
you know, I'd say uh, 7 out of 10. Next of all, let's have a look at this one. This is um, Godox's new camera monitor. This is GM6S 5.5 inches, 4K HDMI, uh, ultra bright, whatever that means. I love all those things. I always say ultra bright, super powerful, means absolutely nothing, but sounds good, you know, marketing. IPS HD ultra bright touchscreen, uh, 3D lot, so that's good. Customer short keys, camera control, real time monitoring. Uh, I'm not too sure about that. If they are doing this, that will be interesting because all the camera monitors I've used in my time. The monitoring has always been slightly delayed. Okay, here's the monitor. Ooh, okay. That doesn't feel cheap. That feels solid. So we've got like kind of a heat sink action going on in the back there. This locking, okay. Straight away you feel the product and you know, okay, this is this is good high quality product, right? So this locking mechanism for the battery here, um, very nice button. So you get a battery, lock it in, get it out. Perfect. Very well molded, very good. So you do have a little kind of side um, thing going on here as well. So you can put a little shade around the monitor if you want to. So on the bottom, we've got one quarter inch screw hole with the locking mechanism as well. If your you know, mounting supports that. DC in and DC out. DC out is for your camera. DC in is probably 12 volt or something like that. You put in there to uh, charge it. Then we've got an SD card slot here as well. So you can put your LUTs in there. USB-C port, which is actually for charging, which is very very nice as well so if you've got a power bank or something like that you can easily charge the monitor or just power the monitor from there another locking quarter inch screw hole there power button then from the top we've got um a scroll wheel for the menu and press down it clicks there as well we've got a back we've got function five and then four function keys another quarter inch screw hole and then the top then we've got hdmi out and hdmi in headphones and remote HDMI to HDMI, HDMI to mini HDMI, no sorry micro and this is mini HDMI here. Then we've got this, oh that's good. So proper locking mechanism for this. So it actually locks in as you can see. Oh I love that, that is good. Oh that feels solid as well. Interestingly these out of the box needs tightening up. Then we've got the hood, we've got the Allen key. Fair amount of accessories. I'm actually using one of the Godox earlier ones in there as well. So this is like a secret monitor in there. Let me see if I can show you on this one. This here is actually connected to my test bench over there. So actually, I can actually monitor my test benching just over there as, as it, they're testing things there. But this is obviously the newer version of that. I wish that the power button is a slidey button. I know that it might take more like kind of uh, space on the uh, monitor, but it's much better when it's just slide in or slide out because when it's power button, I don't know how long do I have to hold on to it. Okay, very good clarity of, the, of this zebra on. Look, you've got lots of... Uh, Monitoring systems here, what you want. LUT, let's say load LUT. Okay, you have to have the SS, SD card in to have the LUTs loaded there. There's no preloaded LUTs there. So far, my first impressions are very good quality, but in terms of quality, that feels much better, much nicer quality. It says 4K HDMI, so it does support 4K input, but it doesn't actually, it's a 1080p screen. There's no point making five inch 4K screen, you won't see a difference there. Okay, our B-Link has finally updated now. So we're gonna get Cinebench R23 out and hardware info as always. So when we are looking at the task manager, we can see that the memory here, even though we've got 16 gigabytes of RAM used, we're only 12.9 gigabytes available or usable because it shares some of it with the GPU. Some of it is like actually VRAM and some of it is like system memory, if that makes sense. So this VRAM here, dedicated GPU memory, see, uh, three gigabytes. Okay, that comes from here. So what is it, 12.9? So basically 13 plus three equals 16. CPU package power, I mean, two what? at minimum power consumption, that's insane. <laughs> that's ridiculous, absolutely crazy. We're still pulling only nine watts. Why aren't we pushing any more out? CPU package, literally eight watts, nine watts pushed out. CPU frequency, let's have a look. What's, what's our core clocks doing? 
2 gigahertz. Why is it configured only at 10 watt TDP? Look, literally 9 watts. We've got loads of thermal headroom. Look, it does run like 60 degrees. I guess in one sense it is good because it's very quiet, literally silent there right now. And the system does feel quite snappy actually and we're only 60 degrees. While it's finishing that there, we've got this Orico USB stick. It boasts of uh, read and write speeds of up to 300 megabits per second. So it's five gigabits port actually. <laughs> this feels like solid metal. I've never been so excited about USB stick before. I'm not putting this in. So what, 4,903 points. Okay, that's interesting. Looks like it's quite a rare uh, kind of um, CPU. It is like a mobile processor, right? So it's typical DDP is 15 watts. Ours here is like 10 watts. Um, TDP down is like 10 watts. Look, there we go. Um, so what I want to know then is if we go to the BIOS, let's see if we can uh, find some settings in there to actually boost this power limit a little bit. Okay, there we go. So interestingly in BIOS, I didn't see any settings where I could adjust the power. Okay, by the way, this USB is supposed to be like no speed drop. And I bet that's just because of the heatsink. It can literally run it like full on speed all the time. First of all, I've got this uh, 40 gigabit Orico SSD plugged in here as well to the front USB-C pod. And I know this can reach speeds like some two, three something gigabytes per second. So I wanna basically test the port speed now. How fast is this one? I'm guessing that's gonna be 10 gigabits. Yeah, look at that, 967. So it's a 10 gigabit port, USB-C port there, not 20 or more, because um, this will support much faster speeds. I'm gonna stop that there. Okay, Ryzen Master does not support current processor and support a processor. So basically, that's it. It's linked to like 10 watts. You can't do anything, that's what it is. So basically, that's the performance you're gonna be getting. I know there's so much more it can give me, so I wish we could get more from there. But I guess at the same time, if you want something that's really silent and something that just runs the same all the time without thermal throttling, there we go. There's the one over there. Not massively like big amount of ports there, but good enough to like run your servers or your media files or, you know, just have it like a small PC somewhere very, very efficient to play back maybe some high-end HDR or 4K content on your TV or something like that. Definitely doable. Fastest port you're going to get is 10 gigabits per second. So slightly limited so this is uni um ssd external enclosure so what is the speed of this but this is quite nice so if we oh that flew off here uh oh there's a spare one there's a heatsink underneath nothing on the top and then you just pop your SSD inside. This is Cardia Z340, so it's Gen 3 speeds, but about 3.5, something like that, gigabits per second. Still very high-end kind of speed. Okay, the locking mechanism is slightly awkward because right now I've got it open, right? So that's open there. I'll try to slot it in there. Look, it doesn't go in. What they could have done is flipped the actual port upside down and have the SSD the other way because I think that would have been a better better option there rather than this way just because we're going to get that more or better heat out there. So the USB stick now completed. 400 megabytes per second, read speeds, write speeds are half of it. I guess uh, quite fast for USB. Ooh, it's quite warm now as well. Now I can see why there's no speed loss. All of this is a heatsink of the USB stick. Pretty cool. Let's try this enclosure. I think this will be 10 gigabits per second uh, speeds there. But there's also this uni USB-C 8 in one hub. Oh, all right. Okay, interesting. So you've got this like kind of rubber housing around it. HDMI, 4K up to 60 frames per second. Uh, gig one gigabit port, USB type A. That's USB 2.0 port, type C. So this is power delivery. You don't get any like pass through or anything like that. So if you've got like something plugged into your kind of laptop, you can plug your power delivery in here and it will straight away charge your uh, laptop if your laptop uh, supports that. On the other side, full size SD card slot and then micro SD card slot, both of them UHS-1 speeds and then two USB type A ports. So as we can see, this uh, uni SSD enclosure is 10 gigabits in speed. We're getting 900 and 
63 something um, megabytes per second and read and write speeds there 800 megabytes per second so these are usb 3.0 pods there it connected to it and how we can test if the this is actually bottleneck is if we take this e again and let's do a test of this usb stick now again and then see if it's any slower than before so basically we've got 10 gigabit pod 10 pod and then this is 5 gigabit pod let's see if it actually works and by the way the way you should should actually um install your nvme in there is if you pull your nvme out getting it out is always hard you put this locking mechanism on your ssd there and then you pop it in honestly they haven't thought this through very well it's not very nice to do you pop it in there and then that's supposed to lock it like that i think this needs to be re rethought it's not rubber it's plastic interestingly look at that our read speeds are slightly slower we've left the best to last so while we are waiting for this speed test to complete we've got something like this here so this is from a minis forum they are quite a good mini pc makers they have made something amazing here okay this is the neptune series this is called hx 90 g and then what we have over here is 5900HX Ryzen CPU, incredible, incredible 8-core processor. We've got dedicated AMD Radeon RX 600, I think it's 66, what's the GPU here? Yeah, 6600M GPU, look at that. Two times, so 60 gigabytes of RAM and then 512 gigabytes SSD. We do not recommend customers to remove the CPU cooler themselves. Okay, that's a... It's a slightly different size PC than the other one we have here. I mean, look, you can already see it's slightly bigger, but on the top, what we can see, there's two fans in there. Obviously much bigger than this guy over there, probably three, four times the size. We've got loads more parts here now. Uh, we've got four display outputs, two HDMI, one display ports, uh, three USB type A, 10 gigabit ports, ethernet port. What is that ethernet speed here? 2.5 gigabit ethernet, that's not slow. And then front panel, we have type A, type C, headphone and mic combo jack there. Very, very interesting. We can see that the USB speed test is completed now, 400 and 212. So that's a pretty good, pretty much the same speeds. So I think the USB-C hope actually works. What I like is that this braided cable feels very high quality and actually the materials everything on the uni here feels very high quality the the enclosure here didn't feel as good the metal is good but then this plastic on the top is kind of half questionable and i think the locking mechanisms uh, could be a bit better but this this does feel very very good i wish there was a bit betterly labeled like what what ports are there you know because on one side this is usb 2.0 but then on the other sides these are 3.0 i wish you could be easily tell the difference by just looking at the ports rather than wait a second which one was which inside here what we can find is also a hdmi cable we've got the mounting brackets for the pc the power cord or power brick here which is massive let's see how much power do we get 262 watts that's how it's going to stand on the table power plug goes over there has a little bit of a wobble there but i am super excited to check this out because i think this is going to pack a lot a lot of power now as a creator the nvidia gpu uh, i want to see how good that is in certain applications but the CPU is incredibly, incredibly powerful. And I think we can uh, push quite a lot of power through there, which is very, very interesting. Now there are stands like on the bottom on this side as well, these, these rubber ones, and then you can lay it flat on the table if you want to. I think for ultimate performance, laying it on the side will be better just because then the intake will be on the side. So the natural airflow will be side and then out from the top rather than this one, which is kind of slightly against the natural airflow. So it pushes the kind of warmish air down and then out from the sides, which could work. But I think this will be better um, thermal performance. Now, not to make this video too long, I'm not going to actually do a full review of this. Uh, I want to do a separate video of this because I think this deserves something else. I think this B-Link here actually does have a base in this video and i do think this is very interesting option for people who want something very power efficient in the back of the monitor very small 
this could be very interesting. And I have a very interesting use case for this. So then, of all the products in this video, let's make a conclusion. Which ones would I recommend? Which ones don't? In no particular order, let's see what we got. First of all, the USB little stick from Orico. I think Orico is like, to me, one of those new um, gold company found, finds for me. Because ever since I got this um, SSD from Orico, this is like USB 4 speeds. I'm very impressed with their products. Now, this design didn't like kind of raise a lot of interest in me because I think it's mm, random, but the performance is absolutely amazing. So this is what I'm using every single day here pretty much because all the benchmarks are on this there. So I was interested to just uh, check out this USB stick and I'm very impressed as well. Then the B-Link mini PC, I'm kind of 50-50 with that. I do think there's a little bit of performance, more performance that we can get from it. I think they've saved on the form factor. So they've just slots the CPU in there even though they have this uh, kind of form factor because it's very over engineered kind of thermals for this which i guess if you're in a hotter environment is good but there's so much more thermal headroom it runs like 60c there's so much more we can push through there but it's very quiet as well there's not like anything particularly awesome about this like that shines out like no fast usb ports or anything like that but i do think if you want to run some monitors or something uh, specifically with this it could be very interesting or to run like a like a server or nas or something like that and then have this control it it could be interesting i'd love to know from you if you have any interesting uh cases from this one but for me in the rating of these things i'd say five out of 10 for this one kind of somewhere in the middle ground then we got the uni m.2 closure and the hub i think they are probably like seven out of ten i think what leaves me hanging there is still the actual design of the ssd enclosure there the locking mechanism and the heatsink should be on the other side because a lot of the ssds have nand most of them have nand on the top if you've got like double sided or something like that like a bigger uh, one a two terabyte one then you might have it underneath as well even though it looks cool and feels nice it, it leaves some on the table i'd say this is maybe five out of ten i think this is lacking some kind of uh, engineering here and i do think this green kind of feels a little bit cheap they could have gone with just silver and black on this but this hope is much better i think this will be like an eight or nine out of ten if you want like a cheaper hope not particularly amazing kind of speeds there but obviously this is not a thunderbolt hub either so it will work with any of the usb ports there uhs1 uh, slots there i do wish that the naming of the ports would be a bit more clearer so we can see what speeds we're getting but other than that i think this is this is great i would recommend this go check them out in the description below then the monitor from godox uh, i think this is definitely a very good pick uh, it's very feels very very good quality the housing is metal so it's meant for heavy duty work by the way i think some of the companies also sent a discount code so i'll try to find them and then check it out in the description below if there is a discount code as well then these in-ear monitors i think they are like maybe seven out of ten i think you're gonna have good time with this but i think if you're really looking for like a fine really good quality high-end ones or like the very very good sound quality i do think there's a little bit of a mix in the eq there that's not quite um, as pleasurable now this could be my personal opinion and let me know if you've uh, tried them before let me know in the comment section below check out some other reviews on these as well but this is just my opinion would i recommend them i think they're still worth checking out and then the, the teleprompter with this i think there's a few things that haven't been ironed out very well so i don't have very good first impression with it obviously this is not a video where i'm doing in-depth reviews this is more like kind of checking out some products and a little bit like a quick overview of the things i think if you have time and you're up to like fiddling with the product i think you can make it work for the price you're paying and for the design and things i think it's slightly expensive i think it should be like hundred dollars something like that i don't quite recommend this to anyone out there i'd love to know if you've got any uh, experience with this or check out some other reviews on this as well so you're not like just basing you know your purchase option only on on, on my videos here and then lastly this minis forum uh, hx 90g 
Check out the full review, it's coming out now. After I finish this video, I'm gonna start working on this one because I think this is gonna be very, very, very interesting. I'm gonna leave all of these in the description below if you wanna check them out. And lastly, if you do wanna build yourself best bang for book create PC, then there's PC build guides in the description below. You can easily find them, they're there. Pick the one that's closest to your budget, configure it to your budget, and you're gonna get the best bang for book PC for you. Feel free to check them out in the description below. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below what do you think about these things how can we improve this uh, series i'll meet you in the comment section below